Peter questions, <laughs> human questions. Right. And, yeah. and we can mix and match, but she's the aficionado of a special effects makeup. Plastic. Aliens. Talk to me, latex. Yes, latex, <laughs> which I do not envy at all because they used to come in at 3 o'clock in the morning and of course us humans were going, Whoa! Seven o'clock. They had listening to classical music, burning incense, praying. You know, just doing our lines for ad nauseum. Yeah. yeah, and we were just partying. Like I'm like, oh wow, a slap of mascara and a hair and a ponytail. I'm in heaven. It's true. Yeah. You know, her braid was tight. It was lovely. It gives you a facelift. I've learned. That's right. Yeah, and it's free and it doesn't hurt. And Andrea and I would, Andreas and I would look at each other in the morning, and just go, ow. Oh yeah. Ow. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was not fun. And then when they would finish work, <laughs> they would have to sit there for another hour to take it off. Oh. Well, we're in there going popping beers and having fun, yeah. and yeah. So we're anyway, going, could you just, you, could you just be careful around my eyes? I'm only 32. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty bad. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take questions, but I, I think you're going to have to come up here to ask them in the microphone. So um, do we have enough cord? Could we maybe give yeah. them one and then we'll share? Yeah, we can do that. Right. There you go, Libby. Uh, who wants to be the monitor of asking the questions? Is there anybody here from the con? Thank you. So can you go around and, and whoever waves their hand, you just give them the mic and they can ask the questions? Awesome. Watch your foot, Claudia. Pick up the pace a little bit, pal. <laughs> so we'll keep this mic and you get one. Okay, so raise your hand if you got a question. Okay, monitor Okay. Isn't that a smart idea? <laughs> I gotta watch you. I love it. Hi. 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 That's really loud. Um, I'm always interested to know, uh, I'm always interested to know what kind of crazy, like, fan stories celebrities have, like, <laughs> creepy crazy or just off-the-wall type things that you've encountered over the years. I got a quick one. And then Julie can have a quick one. Okay, um, back in the 90s I did a convention. Anyone who's read my book, uh, My Life with Freaks and Geeks, will know this already, but uh, for those of you who haven't, I got a, um, a postal worker, all of this is true, who knitted me a California king-size afghan in lovely colors of psychedelic hot pink and lime green, and he delivered it dressed in a uh, giant triple outfit. And he was a huge guy, and he, and he came over and he gave me this gift, and I said, oh God, it's just beautiful. It, it was in a giant hefty trash bag, and he said, well, I knitted it while I was waiting between my, my little posts for the post office. I had a little truck, and I would knit it in between, you know, gigs. And I said, okay, that's that's really cool. Um, I'm thinking, how am I going to bring it home? Right, so, I, anyway. So he comes back about an hour later, and now the triple outfit has been morphed. It's got wires coming out of it. It's got blood dripping down it. It looks really creepy. And he comes up to me, and he says, now you will be morphed too. And he pulls the gun out, and he shoots me. With a full blank, by the way. It was a real gun with a full blank, the same kind of blank that, that killed John Eric Hexham, and, and the same kind of blank that killed... Uh, Brandon Lee. Luckily, I happened to be born with eight ribs on one side, so it hit me in the extra rib area, which is a lot of bone. But I thought immediately in my head, how ironic, Babylon 5 star killed by triple. <laughs> my mother is not going to like this at all. This is not a way to die. So I was thinking I'm dying, and I kind of fell to the ground because I'm thinking now he's going to shoot me in the face, and this is going to be, I mean, it was horrible. So they, they, they pull his head off. You know, so I see his face, they throw him to the ground, the security guards jump on him, people are kicking him and pum pummeling him. He gets dragged away, he gets banned for life. He gets, I, they asked me if I want to press charges and I said, no, he's a postal worker, goes with the job, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, obviously he's not mean, he's just kind of not very bright. So, smash cut to 10 years later, I'm back in New York, I met the same con, and now they've got a huge bodyguard for me because everybody knows the story. Big guy is this, and he's standing behind me, and I look up and I see the slippers, the triple slippers, oh, no. and he's coming towards me. Now he doesn't have the outfit on, but he's got the same 10-year-old or 20-year-old dirty triple slippers on. So he's got just the feet, and he's walking towards me, and he's got jeans and a t-shirt on. I don't see any weapons or bulges or anything, So I'm, I'm, but the bodyguard is like this, ready. And this guy comes up to me, and I swear to God, he says to me, Hi, Claudia. I bet you don't remember me. <laughs> and I say, Yes, I do. You shot me. 
And he literally goes, Oh yeah! <laughs> I shot you! <laughs> have really led a very exciting life to forget that minor <laughs> detail. Yeah. It's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. Shot by a triple. Each. I've known her for 15 years. That's the first time I heard the story. I'm, I'm, I'm gobsmacked. That is amazing. Freaking shot you. No wonder you wrote the book. I mean, you know, when crap like that happens. Oh my god. Okay, now I have a question though. So he was banned for life. How the hell did he get back in? I guess life is 10 years in pawn time. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. I don't have anything even remotely that dramatic or interesting. Um, life is 10 years in pawn time. You know, I probably, the, probably the strangest thing that I've ever seen for me was we, we had some bodyguards at a show in England. It was the Blackpool show. Ah, oh, the famous Blackpool show. And the guy walks up to me and he says, hey, thank you so much, you know, for being here, da da da. Would you sign my arm? And I thought, sure, why not? I mean, he's gonna wash it off in a day or two, maybe a week at most, no. About a month later, the promoter of that show comes back and we're all having dinner and he pulls out a picture and this guy has got everybody's name down his arm. Now that's interesting. I'm thinking the guy doesn't bathe, what's new with fandom, but <laughs> he had them tattooed. He has the entire cast of Babylon 5, our real names, tattooed down his arm. Aww. What? What pissed me off about that was I signed it and it was really kind of a crappy signature and he went and he came back and he showed it to me and I said, if you would have told me you were tattooing, I would have done a nice, neat signature. <laughs> right. How the hell were we supposed to know? I mean, but that kind of dedication, that rampant dedication is what keeps us all in Cheerios and thank you very much. <laughs> And, and how random is it now, 15 years after the show's been off the air, that people are going to go up to him and go, Julie, Caitlin Brown, and Claudia Christian, are these girlfriends of yours? You know, and Jerry Doyle, I don't know. <laughs> He's led a very interesting life. But what really is the kicker of that story? He was our bodyguard. Yeah. Oh. Right. Yeah. The wolf in the hen house. <laughs> Yeah. Next question. Do we have another question? Hello, man with the microphone. Do we have another question? Nobody else is asking anything? Really? He's got one. Hi, dear. So, um, I have all of the Babylon 5. Put the microphone right next to your mouth like that. Is this there better? Go. Can you hear me? Okay. So, I was just wondering, I've seen some of the bloopers and on the DVD, and I was just wondering, from Babylon 5, what have been your most memorable bloopers you've experienced? Most memorable bloopers? Oh, well, I guess you remember um, the, the scenes from C&C when I'm standing there looking out into the stars. Well, there were no stars. There was nothing but a green screen. And you could see part of the crew, and what they would do is they would always try and make me laugh. So when Kosh died, for instance, and I'm trying to get tears up as an actress going, you know, well, you know, I didn't really love him, but I should cry a little bit. Um, <laughs> so I'm sitting there, and of course, somebody, one of the grips, brings a fishing pole out with the Starship Enterprise on it. And, and I start hearing this, do 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 and, you know, so they tried that, then they tried the rubber snake, and then they tried, I mean, they, they, everybody would try to uh, screw me up. But my favorite blooper of mine was the guy who played my father, a lovely gentleman, um, whom I didn't really meet because he was just on screen. When he was dying, he thought this was Macbeth or Hamlet or something. So he was doing the... <coughs> Very dramatic, but a little OTT, over the top. Um, so when you see the shot of me from behind weeping as my father is dying, you know, I'm watching him very ill and he's saying, you know, Zulichka! And you think that I'm crying, I'm actually cracking up. And so all you see is this. <laughs> I ain't crying, folks. I am dying of laughter because when they, every time they play that tape back, I, I would just, I would lose it. So eventually they cut some of his coughing and dying and stuff out so that it wouldn't make you guys laugh as well. That's my favorite blooper. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
do you, you know how I got this job, right? Do you know how I got this job? I'm gonna... Oh. <laughs> he wishes! <laughs> so, I auditioned to play Ivanova, and I auditioned to play Delenn, and I didn't get either part. So I'm home, and Mary Jo Slater calls me at home and says, you heard this, right? You know the story. No. Oh, oh, well, okay. It's a, it'll take a couple of texts. All right. So I get a text back in the day before, you know, cell phones. Call me immediately. Now, usually casting, actor, casting directors don't call actors. That's a very big deal. You don't do that. You call the agent. But it was 10 o'clock on a Wednesday morning. And I called her back. I said, Mary Jo, what's the problem? She goes, I have a job for you. I said, no, you mean an audition? She goes, no, no, I have a job. You need to get out to the Babylon 5 set in Sun Valley. Go. You got to be there by 1 o'clock. I'm like, oh my God. So I get all pretty and I put on my clothes and look fabulous. I get out there and it's uh, John's birthday, one of the producer's birthdays. And But there's this weird energy on the set. And I'm thinking, what the hell happened? What's wrong? So they look at me and they said, will you do a makeup test? I said, yeah, sure. For what? They said, just go in the makeup room. So I go in the makeup room, and you could cut the tension with a knife. I thought, somebody has died. <laughs> there was such a negative vibe in the room, right? It's now about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And all the makeup artists, are, their hands are kind of shaking. Right? They're a little freaked out. And they whip out the Natoth mask. Now, they did not bring the cowl or the lenses, just the face part. And I went, ooh. <laughs> you putting that on me, are you? They went, yeah. I said, oh, okay, all right, yeah, go ahead. So they put this thing on me and they're gluing it, and I'm going, geez, Louise, what is this thing? And all the producers run in going, are you fine? Can you do this? Are you what? And I said, could you hang on a second? I don't even have it on my face. Can we just, hang on, what are, you, what are you asking me to do? They said, well, if you can wear that makeup, you report to work tomorrow. <laughs> I went, oh, well, hang on. So they get this on my face, and I start to hyperventilate. Because I'm a little claustrophobic. But I wore a brace up to my neck and down past my ass for three years through high school for scoliosis. Okay, my backbone's curved. And I literally walked in the hall. I said, just give me a minute. And I went, you did three years in a back brace, 23 hours a day. They're going to pay you. Shut up and take the job. <laughs> I walked back in the room, I said, I'm fine. Then they ripped the makeup off my face. I went, oh, I should have rethought that. No, then I go and I meet Joe. And Joe Straczynski says, here's the series Bible, here's the episode for tomorrow, here's the previous episode, here's the video, go home, watch it, learn it, be back tomorrow at 10. I'm thinking, I want to know what the hell happened to the person who was supposed to be doing this. Well, it turns out at 5 o'clock that morning, she'd had a panic attack and ripped the makeup off her face and quit. Oh my God. Mind you, I had not been put into any of the costume, the cowl, or the big red lenses that a tech has to fold and put into your eye. So I went and I met Andreas, who's in full regalia. I said, Andreas, uh, I'm, I'm Caitlin Brown, and, and apparently I'm going to play Natoth. Uh-huh. I said, well, I, I, I just, you know, wanted to introduce myself. Is there anything I should know about the Narn? Uh-huh. I said, Andreas, really, anything you can give me, I would really appreciate it. He goes, well, all I can say is, read your text, make solid choices, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> So I go home, I don't sleep a wink, I get to the set, I'm in three and a half hours of makeup. By the time they put me into my full garb, the only thing exposed to air are my lips. And we're in, it was October, it was about 95 degrees. Okay, so now they go and say, we're going to start with this very funny scene. You will know pain, you will know death, and then you will die. Right? It's a very funny scene where we're sending off the spy and whatever. That's our first scene together. When we ran lines, Andreas was very cool and he realized I came from the stage and we worked the same way. So he was very nice to me at that point and we found this rhythm. Well, then they said, now we're going to do your fight scene. Can you fight? I said, yes. I said, what do you want me to do? They said, well, we want you to kick the crap out of Andreas. I went, well, okay. <laughs> so I get up there, very first, hi kick, I kick the camera. 
I nailed the flange and I went, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, oh, don't fire me, please. I did, I thought I was going to be fired because I kicked a, you know, how many, much money is that damn thing? But, you know, it ended up being okay. I did get the job. They offered me the series, which I turned down because my face was going to fall off. But that was, for me, we have bloopers of me kicking the crap out of the camera. <laughs> and that's how I got the job. All right, I'm done. <laughs> what happened was Mary Warnoff, who was the original Natoth, did one episode, the pilot or whatever, and said, that's it, I can't handle this makeup. And then they hired uh, another gal. God, what was her name? another Mary or something, and she couldn't handle the makeup. And then I did it for five or six episodes, and then they brought in Mary, the other Mary. Uh, they brought another Mary g gal in for season two. And she did two episodes and was gone. Yeah, well, there you go. Like I said, it's good to be human. And it's good to be glamorous. In a glamorous business, okay, do we have what's the matter now? Well, the panel next door is why we're so loud, because... He's killing us. <laughs> okay, well, whoever's like right there has been so loud, that's why we turned up. But we'll turn it, you turn it down by going to this, the, this over here. Okay, any other questions? We had a question. Come on up. Yeah, there's a, there's a control right here. So, uh, yes. I, I noticed that... Put the mic right here. Oh, I uh, noticed that in the entire fifth season, there is no Ivanova except for pre-cut footage. So, um, I read that, like, you left the series after the fourth season. Why did you do that? Like, well, because... The, we, uh, okay, here I go. <laughs> we shot the last episode of the series at the end of season four. We were told that we didn't have any money for season five. I accepted another job. That job entailed that I would work for the first four episodes while Babylon 5 was being shot. It was from USA Cable. I was the lead of that movie. They needed it in writing that Joe Straczynski would write me out of Babylon 5. Joe Straczynski refused to give me that in writing, so USA said, well, we can't hire you. I had already signed the contract for the USA Cable movie, so if I didn't do that movie, I would get a horrible reputation and probably never work again in that town. So I had to do the movie, and they wouldn't accept his word. They wanted it in writing, and he refused to give it in writing. So eventually it turned ugly and nasty, and my manager said, well,